Okay, as we were discussing the uh, structure of atom, I'm just going to show you the video to show the comparison between these three uh, models. Like as we had discussed about the Thomson model, Bohr model, or uh, Rutherford model. So in this. In this Rutherford model, now we will see the comparison between the different uh, models. Shara, I'm just going to show it to you. Have a look. Widely accepted models all over the world for understanding the structure of the atom. Some net problem is there, data wise. However, several experiments performed by scientists to study the atomic structure showed astonishingly different results. They were contradicting the plum pudding model. Look, this the world for understanding the structure of the atom however, was one of the most widely accepted models all over the world, the plum pudding. The plum pudding model of an atom was one of the most widely accepted models all over the world for understanding the structure of the atom. However, several experiments performed by scientists to study the atomic structure showed astonishingly different results. You have to learn these they were also. contradicting the plum pudding model. This led many scientists all over the globe to reconsider the structure of an atom and study it again. Around the year 1911, a British physicist, Ernst Rutherford, carried out the famous gold foil experiment. He did this to understand the structure of an atom. The experiment was carried out by Rutherford along with Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden. The experiment he performed was a breakthrough in the field of chemistry, which helped him understand the structure of an atom in a more accurate manner. This is how the setup of his experiment looked like. As we can see here, he used a source of alpha particles locked in a lead container with a very small slit. This ensured that the alpha particles only came out through a small opening and traveled in a straight line. But why did he select alpha particles in the first place? Well, the alpha particles were having high energy and were heavier as well. So if we say the atom is like a pudding of positively charged particles with electrons embedded in it, then the particles will pass straight through it. This is obvious because the heavier particles will pierce through the lighter pudding structure of the atom and pass through it. This is what Rutherford thought. For this reason, their greater mass and energy compared to the protons made him choose alpha particles for the experiment. Next, he used a very thin gold foil on which the alpha particles would bombard. Why did he choose a gold foil? Well, a really thin gold foil was estimated to contain approximately 1,000 atoms. Less are the atoms, more convenient the experiment would be. Lastly, are we able to locate this circular band with a gap here? What could this be? Well, this is the screen a fluorescent screen that would help us detect the radiation. That means the screen will glow or emit fluorescent light whenever alpha particles will hit it. So this is how the track of alpha particles can be traced. Now we're all set to understand how the experiment worked. The alpha particles were emitted from the element present in this box. These directly hit the gold foil. Now what should happen ideally? As we know, the Thomson's model suggested that an atom is a sphere of positive charge with negative electrons embedded inside it. That means it is expected that the alpha particles will pass right through the atoms and hit the detector straight. And why so? Because the mass of alpha particles is heavier than the mass of positive charges. That means they should directly hit the atom and move ahead through it. 
only a very small deviation would probably be acceptable in this case. But is this what he observed? Not really. He was astonished to get unexpected results. What results did he get? He found that most of the fast moving alpha particles passed straight through the foil and hit the detector. However, some particles got deflected by small angles. And lastly, to his astonishment, few alpha particles also rebounded. Now, how can this be possible? These three observations made Rutherford think that the plum pudding model is not really correct. Based on the conclusions he had, he put forward the new hypothesis explaining the structure of atoms. What were his conclusions? Let us have a look at the conclusions by Rutherford followed by the new atomic model put forth by him in the next video. Have you seen this thing? There is the comparison now, Neil Bohr, Thompson, and the other I'm just showing you. Rutherford's gold foil experiment gave him interesting results. What results did he get, by the way? Let me recall them for you. He found that most of the fast moving alpha particles passed straight through the foil and hit the detector. However, some particles got deflected by small angles. And lastly, to his astonishment, few alpha particles also rebounded. Now, how can this be possible? These three observations made Rutherford think that the plum pudding model is not really correct. Let us take a simplified example to understand the inferences first. Let us imagine that we have a ball made up of cotton. The cotton in the ball is very sparsely distributed and has an extremely tiny circle or sphere located at the center. This sphere is quite hard and dense so hard that it can even resist a bullet shot against it. Now, what will happen if you shoot many bullets across this cotton ball? Most of them will travel straight through the cotton surface. What will happen if a bullet hits the edge of the central heavy mass? In this case, the bullet will slightly change their path and get deviated. So looking at the size of the central mass, it's obvious that only some of the bullets will get deviated. Lastly, what happens when a bullet hits the center directly? Needless to say, it will bounce back because we know that the central dense mass is too hard for the bullet to pass through. So very few bullets will bounce back. This is analogous to what Rutherford had inferred about the atomic structure. His first conclusion was that most of the space inside an atom is empty. This is because most of the alpha particles could easily pass through the atoms and hit the detector straight. Now, if most of the space is empty inside an atom, then where is the positive charge located? Well, that's the second conclusion. The positive charge is compactly packed in a tiny entity. This occupies an extremely small space inside the atom. Now, why did he think so? Let's go back to our cotton ball and bullet example. Can you recall the second and the third case? Yes, the bullets get deviated on hitting the tiny sphere of the edge and they will rebound when they hit the center. Same explanation holds true for this. A few alpha particles get deviated. That means there is a possibility that these hit the edge of the positive center. Yes, and one more possibility is that they get deviated because the positive center repels the alpha particles as they're also positively charged. Also, a very small number of alpha particles rebounded. That means there is a possibility that these alpha particles had directly hit the positive center. But since the number of these rebounding particles is too small, it explains that the volume occupied by the positive center is also very small. If the space occupied would have been big enough, then the number of alpha particles bouncing back would also be greater. So let's say there are gold particles in the foil. 
he found that most of the rays pass straight through the atoms. A few rays change their path and get deflected. Lastly, very few particles bounce back. These results compelled Rutherford to come up with a new nuclear model. Let's have a look at the hypothesis put forward by him. Firstly, there's a positively charged center in an atom called nucleus. This question can Nearly also all come. the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus. It's given in your book also. Secondly, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular paths. Thirdly, the size of the nucleus is very small compared to the size this of an atom. This is the nuclear model. Of However, atom. theoretically, there were many flaws in the also. hypothesis. Let's have... This, this one is given in your book. book Rutherford model observation and conclusions ke niche it is given. So ye tino points we have to write. Have a look at the drawbacks in Rutherford's hypothesis in the next Main video. Also, just have a look. The let's hypothesis. have a look at the drawback because it's very small compared to the size of an app. This was the hypothesis of the Rutherford atom. However, theoretically, there were many flaws in the hypothesis. You can see there is a positive charge center in an atom called nucleus. Nearly all the mass of an atom is resides in the nucleus. Electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular path. Size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of atom. This is called the hypothesis by the Rutherford also. And this is also called the, uh, you can see on the basis of experiment, Rutherford put forward a nuclear model of an atom. So you have to write down three, these three points. Abhi tak aapne kara tha, Thompson, Rutherford, Rutherford me, Rutherford observation and conclusions you had done. Hana? This was the hypothesis of the Rutherford or nuclear model of an atom. Uske postulates hai teen, ki there is a positively charged center in an atom called nucleus. Nearly all the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus. Electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular orbit. And the third size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of atom. This question will come also like separate question is there. So make sure that these are the hypothesis of the Rutherford as well as we can say the nuclear model of an atom according to the Rutherford. So this question is a little more in the So let's see it. Yes, Tiksha, unmute yourself. Ma'am, what hypothesis ka matlab kya hua? Uske result se unho ne kya matlab but the observation and conclusion and after that but matlab Rutherford ne aur kya uske base pe result diya. Thikhi, the result we had given that is called the nuclear model of an atom. Nucleus ki discovery kari or nuclear model of an atom to ye three postulates uske hain. Thik hai? Ye ek question aapka extra banta hai. Let's have a look at the drawbacks in Rutherford's hypothesis in the next video. Also, we will have a look at the explanation of atomic structure. You have 10 minutes to finish your research. You rush into searching on Google, then you find a title that sounds credible. You enter the page and start reading with all your attention. By the time you read through the entire thing, you realize the content has nothing to do with the title. Ugh. You're so frustrated. But then you start Ek minute of Bohar wala bhi, you just have to look the Bohar's model also. Then this, after this, we will discuss the things. Wait. Rutherford's atomic model was quite commendable when it came to explaining the structure of atoms. However, it was not very appropriate theoretically. Okay, and why are we saying so? We know that any charged object which revolves in a circular motion gains acceleration gradually. Similarly, if the electron is moving fast in a circular path, then it will also gain acceleration. And on gaining acceleration, it's bound to liberate energy in some form. Now, if it continuously keeps radiating energy, then ultimately all the energy of the electron will get over and it will fall into the nucleus. This would result in high instability of the atom. But wait a second, all these things do not happen in an atom. And how do we know this? Because in nature, all the atoms are stable. 
That means the hypothesis put forth by Rutherford was also incorrect? Not really. The hypothesis just needed slight modifications. These were made by the next legendary scientist in our list called Niels Bohr. He made a few additional explanations to describe the atomic structure. The postulates put forward by Niels Bohr were as follows. Firstly, only certain special orbits called discrete orbits of electrons are allowed inside the atom. Secondly, while revolving in these discrete orbits, the electrons do not radiate energy. Now these points definitely tell us why an atom is so stable. But what exactly are these paths or orbits in which the electrons revolve around the nucleus? Let's understand with an example. Do you know how our solar system is? Yes, it appears somewhat like this. Now here, the sun is stationary at the center while the planets revolve around it. But have you noticed that the planets always revolve in fixed paths? We never find any planet jumping to a different path all of a sudden, right? They always encircle the sun in defined paths. In a similar way, we have the atomic structure. The nucleus acts like the sun located at the center and the electrons are like planets which revolve in fixed defined orbitals. These electron orbitals are referred to as shells or energy levels. Now the name energy levels gets us to an important concept. Niels Bohr suggested that the electrons revolving in these orbitals do not radiate energy. This is justified when we use the term energy levels because it indicates that each shell has got a defined energy level. That means when the electrons revolve in these shells, they do not liberate any form of energy. And how do we name these shells to indicate their position? It's simple. Beginning from the one near the nucleus, we name them as the K shell, L shell, M shell, N shell, and so on. Yes, K, L, M, N, and so on. And what if we want to number them? In that case, we use the letter N in lowercase and write them as n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, and so on, beginning from the one next to the nucleus. So we can name them alphabetically, or we can even number them. With all these theories and points known, do we now know the structure of a typical atom completely? The nucleus contains positive protons and the electrons revolving around in fixed orbitals. Is that how an atom is structured? Not really we still have one more subatomic particle left. And what and where could it be? Let's find that out. It was around the year 1932 when a famous English physicist, Sir James Chadwick, found the third subatomic particle. He found that the particle had a mass almost equivalent to that of the proton. And what about its charge? Astonishingly, it had no charge. Yes, the particle was neutral. The particle was later named as neutron, denoted by the letter N. Thus, now we have the complete design of an atom. In the center lies the nucleus having positively charged protons and neutral neutrons, while the negatively charged electrons revolve in fixed orbitals around the nucleus. But how exactly are the electrons distributed in the respective orbitals? Is there a way to find out the maximum number of electrons that one orbital can contain? Or is it that the electrons are randomly scattered in the orbitals? Again, is it clear, Rita? The Pino model, Samari, Thomson model, Rutherford model, and Neil Bohr's model. Pino ka comparison, as I told you yesterday, ki we can discuss. So these three models, so uske ilawa, one thing we had discussed today, nuclear model of an atom or hypothesis of Rutherford. Please learn it properly. Okay, these three models in the structure of atom we had discussed. Uske baad, humne isme structure of atom me uh, discoveries kare thi, electrons, protons, neutrons ki, uh, systematic representation of uh, re, uh, electrons in a shell we discussed. Then, uh, we have discussed the different uh, defined atomic number, mass number, valency, isotope, isobar, and uses of isotope. And after that, the average atomic mass. Ye, this is what all about in this chapter. If any doubt in this chapter, then please ask. After that, we will start the third chapter. But if any doubt in this, ask me now.
तो आपने अभी कहा कि असाइनमेंट सेंड करोगे हम तो फिर में करनी है या प्रोजेक्ट फाइल में असाइनमेंट हवाश असाइनमेंट की बात कर रहे हैं हम यस मैम यस मैम यस यू हैव टू राइट डाउन इन द फेयर नोटबुक मैम वो सेंड करनी है कल मैम वो कल लेके जानी है सेक्शन में सेंड ओके मैम यस प्रतीक्षा मैम मैं पूछ रही थी रदरफोर्ड मॉडल के ड्रॉबैक्स हमने सिर्फ ये दो लिखने जैसे आपने बोला था एक्सप्लेन एक ही है उसका मेन ड्रॉबैक वन ड्रॉबैक ऑफ रदरफोर्ड मॉडल इज देयर ही कुडंट एक्सप्लेन द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ एन एटम यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन दिस पॉइंट इन डिटेल कि ही कुडंट एक्सप्लेन द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ एटम व्हाई ही कुडंट एक्सप्लेन एक्चुअली क्या था उसमें बिकॉज़ अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम क्यों नहीं वो स्टेबिलिटी को एक्सप्लेन कर पाए because according to him when the electrons are revolving around in a particular matlab in uh, revolving around anything when it is in the acceleration it will radiate energy it will lose energy but uh, and after that they will fall onto the nucleus but it doesn't happen he he was not able to explain this thing ki why it's not there ये उनका कंफर्म था कि दे विल नॉट फॉल ऑन द न्यूक्लियस बट अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल व्हेन एन एनी ऑब्जेक्ट एक्सेलरेटेड व्हेन एन एनी ऑब्जेक्ट इज मूविंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर इन अ सर्कुलर मोशन इट विल लूज एनर्जी इट विल रेडिएट एनर्जी बेटे हम अपनी व्हेन वी यूज्ड टू प्ले ए पेंसिल विद थ्रेड लगा के उसके साथ कुछ मार के घुमाए अगर हम तो व्हेन वी विल स्टॉप इट तो वो नीचे गिरेगा ये भी चीज ही वाज नॉट एबल टू एक्सप्लेन कि ऐसे ऐसे क्यों नहीं गिरता when any okay, it will radiate energy it will lose energy and it will fall on to the nucleus fall on the center you can see theek hai but it will not happen agar aisa ho jata to atom stable nahi but he couldn't explain the stability of an atom wo explain nahi kar paya ki atom stable hai kyun hai wo nahi kar this was the reason ki unka model puri tarah se reject nahi hua tha After that, we go over when we give the formula and we explain the why it is not falling. मतलब why the electrons uh, will not fall on the nucleus. जब उन्होंने explain करा कि ये जो move है ना particular हो और a shell. These are called a shell. ठीक है? Then this theory was a pure map. Otherwise, the other part model अपनी जगह पे पूरा सही था. सिर्फ एक drawback था उनका. कि वो एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर पाए कि व्हाई इट इज नॉट हैपनिंग ही कुडंट एक्सप्लेन स्टेबिलिटी कि एटम स्टेबल है वो पता था पर कैसे है ही वाज नॉट इट ओके प्रतीक्षा ओके मैम हां जी मतलब नील बोहर का जो मॉडल था वो बेस्ट मॉडल था जो हम पढ़ रहे हैं बहुत एक्चुअली नील बोहर ने सभी की थ्योरीज को अच्छी तरह से रीड आउट करा आफ्टर दैट ही कंक्लूडेड दैट कि व्हाई एंड जो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स है क्यों नहीं गिर रहे Why electrons are not falling on the nucleus? Then he found out that when electrons are revolving, it is just similar like the solar system. Because the solar system, if we see, 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 if we कोई भी पार्टिकल जब एक पर्टिकुलर दायरे में घूम रहा है इट विल नॉट रेडिएट एनर्जी एंड इट विल नॉट फॉल ये रदरफोर्ड ने ऑब्जर्व नील बोहर ने ऑब्जर्व करा एंड आफ्टर दैट ही नेम्ड इट एज अ डिस्क्रीट ऑर्बिट और अ शेल कि एज द प्लैनेट्स आर रिवॉल्विंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर ऑर्बिट देखो कोई चीज इतने सारे प्लैनेट्स घूम रहे हैं तो सारे गिर सकते हैं इट इज नॉट हैपनिंग क्यों क्योंकि दे आर मूविंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर ऑर्बिट पर्टिकुलर दिस मतलब और यू कैन से द डिस्क्रीट ऑर्बिट ऑफ द शेल द सेम थिंग बोहर मॉडल जो है ही प्रूव इट इज इट क्लियर टू क्या कोई और हां जी मैम क्लियर इट आउट टू डा और तो नहीं इसमें मतलब नहीं मैम ड्रॉबैक एक ही है लेकिन ये टू मार्क्स में इफ द क्वेश्चन विल कम यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन इट वेरी प्रॉपर यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन दिस थिंग कि क्या था अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट क्या नहीं हुआ एंड व्हाट ही वाज नॉट एबल टू एक्सप्लेन दैट यू हैव टू राइट डाउन दिस ठीक है मैम आप ग्रुप में भेज दो कि इसके कौन-कौन से क्वेश्चन बनते हैं मतलब ए ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन की एक भी क्वेश्चन ना छूटे व्हेन यू विल रीड योर एनसीईआरटी ना तो ऑटोमेटिकली यू आर एबल टू 
able to solve all these problems. It's not the bio. Bio means we can frame the uh, questions from the sentence, na? Ek ek sentence hai. But in chemistry, we all know in this chapter three models are there. The main main basic things are there. Why we choose okay. the one point? One question is there. Why we choose it? Okay. What are alpha particles are called? So, आपको पता है कि these are positive particles. These questions, models हैं, definitions हैं. This is the main thing in this chapter. Okay. Fine, ma'am. Thank you so much. Welcome, Mita. Any other is having any doubt? Then please ask. We will do the atoms and molecules by tomorrow. From the starting, I will uh, start from the uh, laws. We will start it. Okay. Anything? 